Hello everyone, I'm Joe prince Wright, the lead writer editor at NBC Sports' Pro Soccer Talk. Thanks for joining me for this very special watch-along event on YouTube. We're going to watch uh, Man City against Liverpool together, the new Premier League champions against the former Premier League champions. So a lot of comments coming in. Send me your questions. I hope you can all hear me okay. This is the first time we're trying something like this. Uh, but yeah, I've got some chips here. I've got a beer. So uh, let me know where in the world you're watching from. And I'm excited to uh, be watching along Liverpool against Man City with you. So um, now, at the moment, teams are heading out of the tunnel at the Etihad Stadium. Of course, this is the much-anticipated uh, guard of honour that Man City are going to give to Liverpool. Something quite poetic about that, right? The former champions uh, giving a guard of honour to the new champions out on the pitch. And this is going to happen for the final seven games of the season for Liverpool. Obviously, won the Premier League title with a record-breaking uh, number. Uh, seven games to go. Quickest title win in Premier League history. And yeah, you can see it right now, wherever you're watching from. Uh, you can see Man City's players waiting. The round of applause, guard of honour, as uh, Jordan Henderson leads Liverpool's players out. Lovely moment. Uh, a lot of respect between these two teams, as close as they've been at the top of the Premier League table, the Champions League, fighting for everything together. But yeah, really nice to see the respect. But Man City's players definitely didn't hang around for longer than they had to. And some of them are already walking back uh, off the pitch. So to wrap up some team news, uh, in case you haven't seen it so far, uh, Man City are going with Edison and goal, Carl Walker, uh, Eric Garcia, Emmerich Laporte and Benjamin Mendy are the back four. Rodri, Gondogan uh, and De Bruyne are in midfield. And then Foden, uh, Gabriel Jesus and Sterling uh, up top. So they've got David Silva, Bernardo Silva, Mares on the bench. Pretty interesting options there. But of course, they're missing the likes of Aguero through injury. So be interesting to see how this attack fires about Aguero. Uh, and then for Liverpool, pretty much as strong as it gets. Any doubts that... Uh, supporters or neutrals had about Jurgen Klopp's men not taking this seriously. They've gone uh, Allison and goal, uh, usual back four of Alexander Arnold, Gomez, Van Dyke, and Robertson. Uh, midfield three of Fabinho, uh, Henderson, and Vinaldum, and then up top Mane, Salah, and Firmino. So again, I'm Joe Prince Wright, the lead writer of uh, NBC Sports' Pro Soccer Talk. Welcome along to this watch along. Um, let me know where you're watching from in the comments. I'm intrigued to see where you're watching from across the world. I know. A lot of people in the UK, the USA and elsewhere uh, have said that they've been watching. So intrigued to get your questions uh, and maybe your score predictions as well. Um, I'm going to go for, to get, I'll kick things off. I'm going to go for a high scoring draw, a lot of entertainment, hopefully. I'm going to go for 2-2 two -two, uh, between these two teams. I think that uh, Man City obviously has some great attack and talents as do Liverpool. And I think now that the title's wrapped up, we should see some great attacking football for the neutrals. And Man City, you know, kind of putting down a marker for next season. So, um, well, we've got um, Uganda's in the house, uh, Minnesota, Detroit, Michigan, uh, LA, uh, Austin, Texas, with a shout out to Austin FC, San Francisco, uh, Utah, Salt Lake City, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. Wow, uh, this is unreal. A lot of people from all over. Um, so thanks for joining us and uh, on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. Pretty sure it's still Thursday, but with so many Premier League games coming thick and fast, I know all of us at NBC and everywhere else across the world, it's, uh, it's great to have so many Premier League games uh, coming thick and fast throughout the week. So score predictions are coming in. Uh, we have the Lone Star Londoner, 1-1. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Man City to win 3-2. 2-3, Yusuf Goat says. So I think that's maybe a 3-2 win to Liverpool. 3-1 Liverpool. Uh, we have a lot more Buffalo, New York's in the house. Brazil, uh, Kuwait, Illinois, Santa Clarita, Ireland, Boston, Baltimore, Tennessee, Arizona, Buffalo, New York again, uh, Las Vegas, Washington State, Atlanta, Connecticut, Virginia, California. All I can say is it's an absolute pleasure to be joining you. Have another sip of the beer, wherever you are. Kickoff is underway between Man City and Liverpool. As the players take a knee to continue their support for the Black Lives Matter movement at the Etihad Stadium. It's been great to see the Premier League players and the 
the league take that uh, so proactively at just the start. Uh, and hopefully uh, that will be the start of a journey um, towards ending racism in the future. So uh, right from the start, Man City are on the attack here. But Virgil van Dijk is doing the business as always. Uh, I think we can all agree with that. 10-0 Man City is a score prediction. Donovan says 3-2 City, 2-2, 1-1. Florida's in the house, 2-1 Man City. Long Island, a lot of predictions here. Um, so, yeah, going to be very interesting. Erie, Pennsylvania, Long Island, 3-2 Man City. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this plays out. So, to start the game, as usual, Man City having a lot of possession and Liverpool high pressing. Certainly a lot of hunger between these two teams here. A lot of history as well. I think we all remember earlier this season, Liverpool winning 3-1. Fabinho with that lovely strike from distance after potential handball decision at the cop end that I'm sure Man City fans haven't forgotten. But I was at Anfield that day. Great atmosphere. Always a great occasion But when these two teams meet up, isn't it? And uh, Klopp and Guardiola have been very, very uh, respectful of each other pretty much throughout their time in England. They play football a very different way. But it gets results regardless. So, uh, Liverpool have been dominant this season. But Man City won the League Cup. Still looking to win the FA Cup in the semi-finals of that. And looking pretty good in the Champions League. Although they do have that second leg of the round of 16 to come up uh, against Real Madrid. And then it may be their last chance of winning the Champions League for a long time. Considering how the appeal goes for their ban against uh, European action for two years. So... As you can see, Man City building an attack down the left side. Mendy's played it in. Uh, Jesus puts it in the back of the net, but he's offside. The flag went up pretty early, but as we see now in the VAR era of the Premier League. Oh, that is tight. I think he's half a yard offside, but very, very tight. Liverpool playing a high line, so maybe that would be something that uh, Man City look to get hold of. So some of your comments here, I'd love to see what you think about um, the way this game started. We've got a, a lot of comments here saying that uh, Horman says, M Mendy makes me nervous. And I think it's interesting, right, to see the reports consistently linking Man City with new defenders, new left backs. Today, the latest was David Alaba from Bayern Munich, who of course can play centre back, centre midfield, left back, pretty much everywhere. And he played with, Pep Guardiola, for Pep Guardiola at Bayern Munich, and his contract's up next summer. So, got a lot of experience, and I think we can all agree that Man City have been unlucky with defensive injuries, uh, but it has, you know, been the big difference, I think, between these two teams, because even the most ardent, oh, oh, good save there from Edison. Double save, first to stop Salah, and then Mendy, as the commenter was just saying there, caught in possession. Uh, and Firmino nearly cleaned up to put Liverpool ahead. So, oh, very close to an opening goal for Liverpool. And they certainly do, don't look like they've been partying uh, for the last week or so since they sealed that Premier League title. But yeah, to go back to some of the areas where perhaps Man City need to improve, definitely defensively, right? I think we can all see that with Laporte being out uh, for a long time this season. He was a big difference maker last season. Had he been fit, I still don't think Man City would have won the title because they've come up short in a lot of other areas as well. But maybe their focus is on the Champions League and the Cup competitions. Who, who knows? But it will be very, very interesting. A lot of comments coming in here, just filtering through a few of these. Very interesting to see, as I said before, where you're watching from across the world. And I want to make your attention... Uh, and make you aware of Jose Mourinho's comments. As those of you who have been watching on NBC Sports, Tottenham losing 3-1 at Sheffield United, which was, who saw that coming? Massive shock to everyone. Tottenham have started the restart pretty well. Sheffield United, not so much. But Mourinho was furious, let's say that, with the VAR decision against Tottenham when it looked like they went 1-0 up early in the game with Harry Kane scoring, Hamble and Lucas Moura. I don't know what you guys think. I thought it was very harsh. The letter of the law probably was correct because when he fell down, 
Uh, he handled the ball, even though he was fouled, and that went on to Kane, and then he scored. But yeah, a bit of a, a head sc scratcher, quite literally there, to see um, that goal being ruled out. And uh, look out on NBCSports.com on Pro Soccer Talk. We're going to have uh, analysis and reaction from Mourinho. Uh, the special one never usually minces his words, does he? And uh, he hasn't done that again. Uh, as Tottenham's top four hopes pretty much hanging by a thread, I would say. I, I can't see them finishing. Maybe fifth will get in the Champions League now. Uh, of course, with Man City's ban up in the air. But considering where they are in the table now, uh, as we look at the standings, yeah, I, they're seven points behind Manchester United with six games to go. So. Tottenham fans, not looking great for you. Let's look at the comments in here. VAR should be done with. That's what the Lone Star Londoner says. Um, pretty happy that Tottenham lost as well. Oh, we got Gabon in the house. Um, very interesting. Uh, and a comment here from Hordman. Vincent Company's leadership is sorely missed. I think he rallied the boys at critical times. Yeah, I'm looking around at this Man City, right? Um, this Man City team. Where are the leaders here? Kevin De Bruyne has been talking about how he has to become the leader now. But when you look around, who else is really sort of leading City in these tough moments? David Silva is there, but not really that, you know, tough character who can drag them through games. His quality is undoubted, don't get me wrong, but defensively, they are lacking a leader with Laporte being out injured. Uh, Fernandinho, of course, great leader, but playing out of position for most of the season at centre-back from central midfield. So, uh, yeah, very, very intrigued to hear uh, what you think about where Man City are going to go from this. Because when you start to look at Aguero, uh, maybe De Bruyne might not be there for much longer. David Silva's leaving in the summer. They're kind of a leadership void there. So, Man City fans, let me know what you think about the future and which players you think you have to go after. So, yes, a few comments in it. It is a watch-along, so we're watching along together, uh, having a beer, got some chips. Let me know what snacks you have, wherever you're watching from. And, uh, yeah, inside the first 10 minutes here, Man City nil, Liverpool nil. Uh, and, of course, Liverpool had the title wrapped up. Man City are playing for a bit more than pride, right? Uh, as Lee Dixon said in our pre-game uh, video and commentary, they're going to be trying to put down a marker for next season, um, trying to show Liverpool, congrats, you've done well, but we are going to be there breathing down your necks next season. So if you take your foot off the gas whatsoever, we'll be there to win the title back. So a lot of comments about showing the game, a lot of, um, so if you're in the USA, you can watch it on NBCSN uh, and NBCSports.com. Uh, but I'm going to be here with the watch along, chat with you live throughout it. And it's been a solid start for, for both teams, really. Man City, close offside call for Gabriel Jesus there. Uh, and then Edison coming up big to deny Salah and Firmino. So, yeah, send in your questions. Let me know um, anything else you want to talk about with the Premier League. Of course, we're focusing on Liverpool against Manchester City now. A lot of comments anti-VAR, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and maybe as we watch through the first half of this game, I'm going to chuck a question out there. Who have been your top five Premier League players since the restart? Uh, Someone I've been thinking about a lot. A lot of players have come back. Oh, De Bruyne won the players. Oh, blocked shot. Liverpool a bit all over the place at the back. De Bruyne went close. Alisson saved it. And this segues us very nicely. Oh, Liverpool on the break now. Looked like there's going to be a free kick, but Sadio Mane is clean through. He's got one defender to beat. 
Let's have a look what he can do. Alexander Arnold now on the right. Whips in a great ball. Mane heads it wide. Liverpool will look very dangerous on the counter, but De Bruyne there was went down injured right on the edge of the Liverpool box. It looked like a foul, but no, it wasn't. He kind of stood on the ball and twisted his knee a little bit, which isn't good news for Man City to see their captain go down. But I don't think there was really a foul there. So play has gone on. But uh, yeah, top five players since the restart of the Premier League. I'm going to go with Christian Pulisic, obviously. I'm going to go with Danny Ings from Southampton and Bruno Fernandes. There's three of my five. So let me know uh, the top five players uh, that you've enjoyed watching since the restart. Uh, a lot of people saying Pulisic, which, you know, we are streaming on NBC Sports. So I'd imagine a lot of you are from the USA. So that makes perfect sense. But this isn't just an American thing. Uh, I spoke to Frank Lampard yesterday after the, the West Ham defeat to Chelsea. And he said the main positive was Pulisic's performance. I mean, it's pretty much four games back for Chelsea and four man-of-the-match performances for Pulisic, which is quite something to think. You know, he's been out since January with the, the nasty adductor injuries that he had. Uh, now he's come back, scored a couple of goals, had a couple of assists. Uh, and, he, you know, I don't want to throw out the Eden Hazard comparison, but a lot of Chelsea fans are saying that. And it's hard to argue with him right now because he's been absolutely relentless, making up for lost time. And, and Lampard said to me last night, he said, you know what, this, he did play like this before he was injured over the festive period, November, December. And, and of course, he did have that hat-trick against Burnley, scored against Palace and Watford. So, um, yeah, get this stat. Christian Pulisic is the top scoring player in the Premier League this season under the age of 21. So granted, there's not too many players under the age of 21 playing. But that just shows the impact he's having in his first season in England with Chelsea. So really intrigued uh, to see how he gets on for the rest of the season and beyond. OK, got a question from Billy Bob. Oi, all right. Uh, I got a question. What makes Van Dyke such a good defender? Could you give your analysis? Well, you know what? Um, I think the one thing that I always love about Van Dyke is the time that he has on the ball. Uh, he always seems to be one step ahead uh, of every attacking player around him, and that's because of his positioning. I think he's a very quick defender. I think he reads the game so well. Uh, and I've watched him very closely uh, at Southampton uh, before he moved to Liverpool, and it felt unfair in some games that he was playing for Southampton. No disrespect to them, but he was so much better than any other player on the pitch multiple times. Um, the best comparison I could give is it was like he was playing in a U12 game and he was 18 years old. He was just on the next page. Um, I think over the years when he first came to the Premier League from Celtic, Ronald Koeman worked with him a lot about his concentration and his focus. And I think for Van Dijk, he did make a couple of errors. He'd, li he'd like to come out of the back with the ball quite often. If you look back when he was playing at Holland and then at Celtic, and even in his first few seasons, or his first season really at Southampton, got caught out a few times on the ball and trying to play those Hollywood passes. But he still does that, still great distribution-wise. But I think focus has been the big key for Van Dijk becoming, in my opinion, obviously the best defender in the world. But when it comes to the Ballon d'Or vote, I think he should win it ahead of Messi and Ronaldo. So I'm just going to pause because in the comments section, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys have to say about that. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or this season? But I think with how dominant Liverpool have been, going forward, yes, but defensively over the last two years, there's no doubt that any Liverpool fan watching knows that that's the main reason they won the Champions League and they won the Premier League because it's given them a solid foundation and a base to build from. And we can see Man United are kind of doing the same thing now as well, right? They've got a settled back four. Defensively, they're set up. Uh, much better and now they can use those attacking weapons to win games because Liverpool over the last few years and Man City to be fair when Guardiola first arrived they scored boatloads of goals didn't they but they were losing games for themselves let's put it like that big mistakes from goalkeepers defensive players and that is why Man City are uh, second in the Premier League and why Liverpool are so far ahead in the title race this season so Billy Bob thanks for your question 
I appreciate it. Okay, Giovanni Galvis says, maybe Lewandowski or Benzema or Ronaldo should win it this year. I mean, it usually goes to an attacking player, doesn't it? So I can see where you're going from there. But I, I would love to see a defensive player win it. Um, I think it's been a long, long time. You know, Cannavaro, <sighs> Nesta Maldini, some of the great Italian defenders are always up there uh, with these awards. Watching Liverpool come on the attack here as we chat. There is a game going on, so it is a watch along. Raheem Sterling accelerating away, leading a Man City attack. But who is there? I think Virgil van Dijk is there to sweep up the attack and start a Liverpool counter. As you can see, we've got a link in the comments section there to watch along with me. And it's very interesting indeed to see uh, some of your comments here. Okay, Edmund, since the restart, um, thinks Willian, Danny Ings, Bruno Fernandes and Martial have been uh, some of the top players since the restart. Difficult to argue with that. Willian, a little bit. I'm like, he's been he's been good. Um, Martial is up there. In my list of the top five, I had Pulisic, Danny Ings, Bruno Fernandes. I had Michael Keane from Everton, which, you know, I don't know if everybody would agree with that. Uh, and then my fifth and final guy was Kevin De Bruyne, obviously, for the wonderful assist. The free kick against Chelsea for me was worth it on its own. Uh, and yeah, to sum up what's going on in the game here, Andy Robertson just had a ball. Uh, he floated forward aimlessly. So here come Man City. Gabriel Jesus again offside. And that man, Kevin De Bruyne, just as we mentioned it, carved open the Liverpool defence. And definitely a tactic the City are using here. They're trying to get it through centrally. There's a lot of gaps between Joe Gomez and Van Dijk. And Jesus just hasn't been holding his run. You'd have to think that if Aguero was fit for Man City, he probably would have put uh, a few of those chances away. Who do I think will win? Uh, Kevin Coado. I went for a draw, sat on the fence massively. Um, at the moment, I see it, it's quite open. Both teams have had chances already. Hasn't got quite the same intensity. Uh, maybe that's to do with no fans being in the stadium and stuff like that, but Still a good game. Uh, Salah's racing free down the right now. Liverpool got men in the box. But good defensive work there from Man City. Andy Robertson up for a header. And yeah, Man City get it clear. But I think it's going to be a draw. Um, love to see some more goals, especially before half-time. And yeah, um, I'm really intrigued to see Liverpool fans uh, and to hear from you. Okay, Salah is clean through. Clean through, Salah. Hit the post. Comes back. Sadio Mane's touch is off. Very good chance there for Liverpool, of course. Oh. Edison was beaten. Mohamed Salah came into the box on his left foot. Near perfect finish, hit the post. And Liverpool come close twice now. Mane couldn't quite control the ball, bundled out of play. But uh, yeah, Liverpool look good. And Man City under a lot of pressure, playing the ball around in their own box, as they like to do. So Giovanni in the um, comment section, it says, who do we think will be in the top four at the end of the season? So get your questions in or answers in. Um, 
obviously these two, Liverpool, Man City, are going to be in the top two. And then Leicester are struggling. Leicester and Chelsea, right? If, if you've got any Leicester or Chelsea fans out there, treat to see what you think because stumbling is the main word that uh, comes into my mind when I talk about your teams. But uh, Sheffield United maybe aren't out of it after that big win uh, against Tottenham today. Man United and Wolves flying. They look great. Wolves are the only perfect team since the restart with Adama Traore and Raul Jimenez pulling the strings and connecting all the time up top. And they play Arsenal on Saturday on NBCSN at 12.30 Eastern time. So it'll be very interesting to see how this top four battle plays out. But De Bruyne here is the ball on the edge of the box. He's beaten Alexander-Arnold. But the last touch come off De Bruyne and it's a goal kick. To Liverpool. Great defending from Liverpool. Um, okay, i got a question for Liverpool fans. I want to see your answers in the comments. How on earth do you improve next season? What areas of the pitch do you need to buy a new player in? Do you need to buy anyone? Or what young players would you like to see come into the team? I know Naby Keita, if he's fit, everyone would like to see him play more regularly, but are there any areas uh, of the team that you would like to see Jurgen Klopp strengthen? Because I'm scratching my head a little bit to see how they get better without spending a lot of money. Uh, Klopp's already said they probably won't do that. They'll look at Harvey Elliott's, uh, you know, a lot of good young players there coming through. And it'll be interesting to see what they do, right? Let's have a look. Henderson is running around like a madman, Hordman said. Who is the GOAT in soccer, Kevin? I think I'm going to leave you in the comments to sort that out. Messi or Ronaldo, flip of a coin, really, at this point. All right, I love this question. From uh, Dieter... What do I think about Kinklatsi? Could he be a great player if he played in these days? For anybody who doesn't know, Georgie Kinklatsi was uh, and still is a Man City legend. He played in the early 90s in the Premier League when City were struggling towards the bottom end of the table um, and, you know, Alan Ball and a few other managers. But Kinklatsi was one of the great playmakers in Premier League history. Loved to, you know, get the ball in attacking areas. I remember a great goal he scored against Southampton when he took on about eight players and finished it. One of the best Premier League goals of all time. So if any of you haven't heard of Georgie Kinklatsi, go onto YouTube, uh, type in his name, and you'll see a lot of great videos. I think he could be a great player in this Man City team. Love that question. Uh, I see a bit of, you know, David Silver in him. And... Uh, yeah, he would slot right into this Man City team. It was kind of a bit unfortunate that he wasn't born a few years later because uh, his stock would have grown already. Okay, oh, big decision. Penalty kick to Manchester City. Raheem Sterling hauled down. Wow, drama just before the drinks break. I'm going to have a drinks break while I watch this replay. Joe Gomez. Kind of all over Raheem Sterling a little bit. Dragged him down. Oh, but Sterling did go down a little bit easy, in my opinion. Joe Gomez is booked. Of course, Sterling and Gomez, a lot of history, right? When they squared up at the end of the 3-1 win for Liverpool against Man City earlier this season. And they had that coming together, shall we say, uh, when they met up for England a few days later had to be separated. And let's see what's going to happen here. Go. Man City, 1-0 up. Kevin De Bruyne, who else? Stroked the ball into the bottom corner. Sent Allison the wrong way. Man City, 1-0 up against Liverpool. And on... If I think about the play in the first half of this first half, as the players now have a break for a drinks break, which I'll do that as well. I think it's a little bit harsh on Liverpool to be 1-0 down. Um, seeing the replays here of Gomez and Sterling, 
Gomez had a couple of targets at him. Uh, Sterling could have gone down first. Then he tried to wriggle away. Gomez had his hand around his waist, but I think Sterling is really waiting for the contact there. Uh, and as soon as he kind of turns towards goal and is going down a bit of a blind alley, I think he kind of goes down. But Gomez does have his hand around Sterling's waist. Probably, percentage-wise, I'm going to say 60-40, it was a penalty. So, intrigued to see what you think. And it is 1-0 to Man City against Liverpool in the first half. That gives us a chance to have a bit of a break here. Um, get your questions and comments coming in. I'm Joe Prince-Wright for NBC Sports. Uh, anything you want to chat about, even if it's aside from Man City Liverpool, of course, our focus will be on that. But yeah, it would be interesting to see what you think about the top four battle in the Premier League to, for the Champions League qualification, uh, relegation battle. I know what you think. I love these water breaks with the managers almost having a timeout. As someone who watches hockey, basketball, NFL uh, quite a lot, very interesting to see. Uh, the managers making the most of these timeouts and Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, Mourinho, although it didn't work too well for Mourinho today, but they've all said very honestly and openly that they want timeouts in the future. So uh, maybe we'll see that after uh, football returns to being somewhat normal. Hey, got a question here. Do I think Man City suspension will be upheld from Austin Platt? I, my personal opinion is that I can see it being reduced to maybe a one-year ban. Um, obviously, if you're not aware of the situation, Man City were banned from UEFA for two seasons from the Champions League and Europa League uh, for uh, after an investigation into uh, some accounts, details that were found uh, due to a hack in Man City's system. So the allegation is that uh, they tried to uh, get around some of the financial fair play rules and weren't honest and open with UEFA about that. Um, they got a two-year ban. Man City appealed to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. So as things stand, Man City will not play in the Champions League next season and the season after. Uh, but I think that ban was so lengthy. We, we haven't seen a ban really of that length from UEFA. Uh, almost just to say, Man City, this is what could happen and maybe we'll just ban you for one season. So unless there's some evidence that will you know, come up, um, that really changes the court of arbitrations for sports mind. I think Man City will at least be banned for next season. Um, and we'll wait and see what the, the fallback from that is. So, uh, again, anyone join us in the comments? Hello. It's 1-0 to Man City. Penalty kick from Kevin De Bruyne after Joe Gomez brought down Raheem Sterling. Next question, will fifth place get Champions League football? If Man City's ban is upheld, then yes, that is the understanding. Of course, Premier League rules... Uh, I haven't really had anything on this officially uh, because the situation hasn't cropped up before, but that is the understanding that they would agree um, to just move the Champions League place down to the next team in the table. So everyone expects that fifth place would be in the Champions League. So Arsenal, Tottenham, Wolves, Sheffield United, maybe even Burnley, your fans can dream of Champions League football. Uh Alexander says, do I think, mate, do I think there'll be more than four goals in this match? Previously, I said 2-2, so I thought there'd be exactly four goals in this match. But seeing some of the open play here, I would go with more than four. I think that would be, uh, oh, Gabriel Jesus just slipped as he squirmed three inside the box. Great chance for Man City there. Don't think he was offside in the build-up. He managed to curve his run. After, yeah, just just on side, but that man Kevin De Bruyne again putting the chance on the plate for Jesus and De Bruyne. Maybe he's in the in the uh, conversation for the Ballon d'Or this season. Yes, Man City haven't won the title, but he's been sublime. Will probably be the main reason if City win the Champions League. Uh, you know why uh, they do that is De Bruyne's form. So it'd be very very interesting. Sanchez to United. My thoughts. Watching Man United since the, the restart for most of the season, I don't really understand why they need another attacking player right now, especially a player that Borussia Dortmund are asking 
over 100 million for. Um, if you look at Mason Greenwood and his development, his progress, I would probably go with keeping him at the moment. Uh, Sadio Mane's in. Big chance for Liverpool here, but Man City clear. So, yeah, I don't know if Man City need, an, uh, sorry, Man United need another attacking player right now. Sancho has been great, of course, for a long, long time now. And he's still so young. But I would see how it goes the next few years uh, for Man United, maybe another year, uh, and then wait and see uh, how the transfer market goes. But this could be the summer, you know, where teams take advantage of some of the financial implications uh, of the current COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, perhaps some teams have got money to spend, the likes of Chelsea. We've already seen them going for Timo Werner and, and Ziyech. Uh, and then obviously linked to Kai Havertz as well. So maybe Man, Man United are one of those other teams that have a lot of money in the bank, so we're told. So they might be able to take advantage of the transfer values dropping a bit. So, hey, look, if they can buy James Sancho, buy him. He's a great talent. But I think at the moment, if I'm Man United, I would probably prioritise buying a long-term holding midfielder because Fred's okay, Scott McTominay's okay, uh, and Matic is, you know, getting towards the end of his career, but very good player. Uh, but maybe there and, and maybe another centre-back alongside Maguire because Lindelof has his moments, doesn't he, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, great question. Thanks for that. A question here coming about Danny Ings, who was one of my players of uh, the restart so far, right up there in the golden boot race uh, at the top of the Premier League scoring charts. And a lot of Liverpool fans watching this will be delighted for him on one side of things and then maybe a little bit upset he didn't keep hold of him. But obviously he was injured a lot when he was at Liverpool. So I think Southampton need to keep hold of Danny Ings, but I think that the likes of Tottenham, Everton, maybe even Arsenal, if they you know sell a Yang or Lacazette, that he's perfect for them. Uh, plays on the last shoulder, high pressing, sets the tone uh, for the press, uh, for the way a lot of these teams play now. But I wonder how much he's going to cost. You know, um, cost Southampton, I believe, around nineteen million US dollars at the start of this season, so last summer. He had a year on loan, obviously, uh, and that was part of the agreement. But now that he's fully fit, probably worth around $60 million, I'd say. Oh, as we're watching, Salah's in. Edison comes off his line, great tackle, and then takes the ball off Henderson, who isn't too happy about it with a studs-up challenge. Great defensive from a proper... Uh, great defensive work from a proper sweeper-keeper. Oh, the ball did hit Edison's arm. As he came out, he tackled Salah, but the ball hit his arm and then he cleared it away from Henderson and made sure he left a bit on Henderson as well. So maybe a bit lucky to get away with a handball outside the box. It certainly wasn't intentional, but if the ball doesn't hit Edison's elbow there, probably goes clean through and Salah's got a tapping on an empty net. So very interesting. Okay, Steven Sabia says Traore has been dominant on the wing and Jimenez has been nice too. Agree with that. Um, Mexico is where Al Jimenez has been brilliant this season. Another player they're talking about, Real Madrid, Barca. Some of the other Premier League big boys coming for him. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think if Wolves qualify for the Champions League, I don't see any reason why Traore and Jimenez should leave at all. They're in a great place playing for a team that suits their style of play and in the system they play very very well indeed and they know they're going to play every game so yeah why leave Wolves but uh, Bruno Fernandes has been on fire lately that's what Sammy said brilliant uh, read something today where he's had a similar impact to Eric Cantona did maybe the missing piece of the jigsaw for Man United as Man City come on the attack with Phil Fodden to Raheem Sterling cuts inside 2-0 to Manchester City Raheem Sterling is particularly delighted about that. Liverpool fans want to hear your thoughts about this because do look a little bit shaky defensively. Man City are fired up for it, but um, yeah, let's look at the replay. Mendy wins it, plays it into midfield. Simple through ball up to Jesus. Phil Fodden, the Stockport and Yesta, plays in Sterling. One touch, clips it over Allison. 2-0. And whoever asked about two or uh, four or more goals in the comments there, looking pretty good right now. Lovely finish from Sterling. Nutmeg Gomez and in off the post. So it looks like Sterling's getting his revenge over Gomez today. 
after their little spat in previous games and while they were on international duty. So, yeah. Well, if my 2-2 prediction comes true, that means Liverpool are going to have a great comeback in the second half. But at the moment, it is wave after wave of Manchester City attack. This could be a cricket score, as we say in England. Uh, it really could be. Open, entertaining game. Just what we thought it would be, right? Both of these teams have nothing to lose. City pretty much got second wrapped up. Liverpool, of course, have won the title. But it looks like Liverpool have been having a few of these uh, the last few weeks. Obviously, they were allowed to after the title win. We saw the scenes of them partying behind the scenes in their little bubble. But maybe the players have been having a few more parties since then because they've certainly been sluggish defensively, playing a high line. And just like the Watford game, really, and the only other Premier League loss they've had this season, been caught out with Van Dijk and Gomez, caught square, Man City playing on that last man, whether it be Jesus, Sterling, uh, they're pushing forward, and then De Bruyne and other midfielders have got so much time on the ball there in midfield. And Alexander Arnold is showing his frustration. Jurgen Klopp there, hands on his hips, mouth wide open, showing his disbelief. And yeah, pretty poor display from Liverpool so far. I say that they've had chances. They've had hit the post from Mohamed Salah. Edison's made a couple of good saves. So very interesting to see how this keeps going because Liverpool are going to keep pouring men forward. What do they have to lose? They have the records to go for for the rest of the season and the most wins, the most points, biggest winning margin. But at the moment, Man City are going to claw a few points back, it seems, at the top of the table. Robert Fisher, great question. Do Liverpool need a Xavi to complete the jigsaw? I saw a link with last week. Uh, was it Thiago uh, Alcantara from Bayern Munich, Spanish playmaker? I think he'd be perfect. He's got a year left on his contract at Bayern, I believe. Um, so a bit of a deal to be had there. When you look at their midfield, Fabinho's great in the holding role. Henderson has been wonderful this season, obviously. Vinalda, Milner, Keita, Oxlade Chamberlain. Very different types of player. A couple of more defensive minded players there centrally. In terms of Keita and Oxlade Chamberlain, love to get forward. But they need a player, I think you're right, to kind of put his foot on the ball, take the pressure off, the tempo, and just kind of give them a bit of a plan B, right? Because as we're seeing here, when another team dominates possession against them, like Man City are doing today, it's quite diff difficult for them to slow it down and maybe have the ball and spray it around at the back. That's not the way that Klopp sets his teams up to play. So I think, yeah, Thiago, someone like that would be great. Uh, and I really think, you know, it would be interesting to see what they do in the transfer market. Uh, some love for Riyad Mahrez here. I've got him in my fantasy team, so I'm hoping he comes on in the second half. And scores a few goals but because he's been brilliant. Um, oh, Daniel. Daniel Samaru, you've opened up a can of worms here. Liverpool is overrated. Going to leave that comment there. I'm sure you're already going to have a go in the comment section there. Uh, and he backs it up with saying, for me, they're having a lucky season. I can see what you're saying. Um, certainly not lucky to be this far ahead. They're a great team. And I think Man City and Liverpool are clearly the two best teams in the Premier League. But, um, yeah, if some of the calls didn't go their way, some of the late winners, the tight 1-0, 2-1 wins that they've had, I think even the most ardent Liverpool supporter, let me know in the comments, but do you think that um, you were really 20-odd points better than Man City? I don't think many Liverpool fans would say they are. They're the better team this season. They've edged it compared to last season. Uh, but, yeah, be interesting to see what you've got to say. A lot of comments going on here. It's good to see that you're all having a bit of banter. This is what it's all about. The whole idea of this watch along is to, again, have a beer. I'm going to probably need to get another one at half time, but uh, ask some comments, ask questions, watch the game together. And hopefully we can do this for some more big games coming up throughout the summer, wherever you're watching in the world. In the Northern Hemisphere, obviously it's the summer. Uh, and yeah, oh, lovely spray ball out wide here to Robertson. Haven't seen much of Robertson or Alexander-Arnold today, which uh, 
It's a bit surprising. I thought down the flanks would be one of the areas where Liverpool would really hurt Man City because Carl Walker and Mendy haven't had a great season, I don't think. And, you know, Zinchenko and obviously Jao Cancelo have come in and out of the team. So not a strength of, of Pep Guardiola's side this season at all, fullback positions. But so far, they've been really good. And a straight pass there, trying to find Alexander-Arnold. And, and Man City are very happy with that as the ball goes out of play. Okay, Pacey says, who do I think will win? Well, it's 2-0 to Man City now. So before the game, I said a draw. Probably go to Man City to edge it now. Uh, and yeah, be very interesting. Sammy asks, Salah is underrated. And the comment above it says, Salah is overrated. I'm going to go ahead and say that Salah... Divides opinion. I think his productivity has been through the roof since he joined Liverpool. This season, more so than last, he's gone missing in some games. Um, but the expectations are obviously up here. When it comes to Salah, he's done so many great things in the Champions League win the season before that. It's difficult to keep meeting those expectations. That's why Messi, Ronaldo, Aguero, uh, Henri when he was at Arsenal... Uh, the great Man United players, why they were so great, because they, they kept doing it season after season. And Salah, they do it three seasons now, unbelievable talent. Um, and yeah, I can understand some Liverpool fans want a little bit more from him. But still, what you're getting from him isn't too bad, is it, at all? Uh, Liverpool forgot how to play, that's one of the comments. Uh, a lot of love for Phil Fodden here. Could be a starter for England at the Euros. And yeah, talking earlier, we had, you know, the Liverpool need a uh, Iniesta Chavi type in midfield. I think that's the one thing England have been missing in midfield, really. Uh, I say this as an Englishman, but getting to the semi finals of the last World Cup, missed a player in midfield who could put their foot on it, slow the tempo down. It was all very much, you know, great attacking play, but didn't control games, especially in the semi final against Croatia. Two summers ago, uh, it happened. I'm still talking about it as our oh, most Englishman uh, and woman. But I think that, you know, Phil Fodden is a great talent. Um, and as I say that, he's been taken down by Liverpool as he started uh, another Man City attack. And he's just the kind of player that England need and a very un-English-like player in a lot of ways. Um, so it's great to see Pep Guardiola doing a great job for the English national team and developing his talent. And he really is a mini-me, a, a mini-David Silva uh, or someone of that ilk. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. So, a lot of people say City are the best. A lot of very proud Liverpool fans here. Did Aguero leave City? No, no. He's just injured, so he should be back, hopefully, for the Champions League. They're talking. He may not play again in the Premier League season, but he had knee surgery in Barcelona. Apparently went well, so we'll wait and see. Uh, what do I think about Alexander Zinchenko? Uh, great question. I don't think he's really played in his natural position since he's been at Man City. He's been forced to play left back. He's obviously more of a winger or midfield player. I think he's obviously liked by Guardiola, um, but I, there have been a few defensive errors this season, but purely because I don't think he's a left back and he's been used, his versatility has kind of gone against him, right? Um, he's been used uh, in different areas because he can play there, but I think going forward, uh, it will give Man City options on the wing. Uh, maybe his future is in midfield, you know, when Fernandinho is done, maybe he is uh, one of the, the players you can play hold a midfield alongside Rodri. But yeah, good player, good talent. Um, like to see him play in his natural position. Uh, okay, a lot of banter about Arsenal. Do we think they're going to win the Europa League or, sorry, get into the Europa League? They're already out. Um, Champions League. What do we think here? Okay, well, as you can see in the comments section already, something uh, has just happened in the game. And I can say that. The man we've just been praising, Phil Fodden, wonderful one-two. 
smash it to the top corner. Man City are three 0 up. Liverpool all over the place, really, really all over the place defensively. Um, yeah, Stockport and Iniesta, local lad Phil Fodden. See the replay of the goal here. Rodri plays it in. Fodden gets it. Plays it back to Gundogan, to Fodden, to De Bruyne. Lovely little flick around the corner from De Bruyne. And Fodden lifts it over Allison and in. And Van Dyke and Robertson for one of the first few times this season. Totally caught out of position. Robertson went diving in. And Man City, oh my word, absolutely dominating Liverpool. Apart from the, when they hit the post and had a couple of half chances on the break. You know, this is a statement, right? I, I know, can we read into this too much? This is one game a week after Liverpool have obviously won the title and maybe had a bit of a party, a, quite an elongated one by the looks of it. But is this a, a trend? Is this a sign? Because I remember hearing that City want to do three things the rest of the season. Want to win the FA Cup, win the Champions League and beat Liverpool comprehensively in their, this game today to say, we are still here. They're doing that, right? They're doing one of those things. They're in the FA Cup semi-final and they're among the favourites for the Champions League uh, alongside Bayern Munich, Madrid, probably Barcelona, but who knows with them and Juve as well. They've got some tricky uh, knockout games coming up. So, yeah, heading to halftime here. Very interesting. I want to hear your thoughts on the first half. Sum up the first half for me in the comments section. Liverpool fans, Man City fans, neutral. What's been your overriding thought on the first half of this game? Because I'm stunned by this. I expected it to be open, attacking, entertaining, uh, but I did not see this coming. Okay, Eduardo Cadenas says Sterling flopped. He went down easy, let's put it that way. Um, there was contact there, but a bit surprised VAR didn't have a good look at that one. Didn't look like it really intervened. So, uh, yeah, be interesting. The best football match ever. What's the score? 3-0 Man City against Liverpool. Okay, Pacey's got a good comment there. Firmino can't get the ball, Salah can't shoot, and Mane can't take a good touch. I think he pretty much summed up the first half well there for Liverpool. Um, not a good situation at all. Um, and yeah, very interesting to see how the second half goes. Uh, Hordman is, is looking look, looking like he's enjoying this one. Um, seems like several UK papers and online media have dubbed Liverpool uh, the next team to dominate the Premier League for several years to come. And then City says, hold my beer. Yeah, they're doing that today, aren't they? Uh, like we said earlier, putting down a bit of a marker saying, well done on your title, but we'll be back next season and it will be very interesting to see. Fodden's been outstanding. That's one of the key takeaways. Can City beat Barcelona? Very interesting. Absolutely horrendous. That's one of the comments. Assuming that is towards Liverpool um, because they haven't been good at all right now. Uh, Daniel's drinking a soda. Gonna have a water here, rehydrate. Got some snacks. And, and Pacey's coming through with City winning next season after this match. You wow, that's a big statement. I, I'm not sure they're going to win next season, but uh, it will be very interesting. Sammy, who do I think is the best player at Liverpool? Most impactful is probably... Virgil van Dijk, best player, Sadio Mane, someone like that. So uh, even Mohamed Salah as well. So get your questions coming in the comments. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of a break here and let you guys chat in the comments. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, and just to let you know, on NBCSports.com, we will be talking to um, Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp uh after this game via zoom it's been really cool that we've been able to uh chat with them uh after games via zoom so wherever we are in the world uh, we can have some input uh on them and, and ask them questions after the game so uh yeah have a chat in the uh comments i'll be back very soon and enjoy watching the second half here <laughs>
Okay, I'm back. Got a fresh beer. Let me know what you guys are drinking. I'm having a, a blueberry lager today. Usually I keep a pretty simple lager. Maybe a Guinness every now and then, but it's the summertime, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. A bit refreshing. And yeah, what changes do you think Liverpool need to make at half time? I can see a lot of you in the comments section there talking about it. Who do we want to see come off the bench here? Let's have a look at the lineups. Of course, we have attacking wise Minamino, Origi, Oxlade Chamberlain, Nabi Keita. I think bringing on the Ox and Keita midfield would give Liverpool maybe a little bit more energy. Vinaldum and Henderson off. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe a Riggy has an impact. Maybe this is a, a chance to see Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott, how they respond in a big game, bring him on. I mean, what have you got to lose at this point? Already won the title. Everyone's already happy, but reading the comments, not everyone's happy. Uh, Daniel says Salah needs to come out. The whole starting lineup. <laughs> Okay, I mean, you, you can't you you can make five subs now in the Premier League with the new rules for this season and potentially next season. But yeah, um, someone's very excited about Aubameyang, Golden Boot, Arsenal forty nine unbeaten in the comments, which is great to get excited about. Um, okay, Kevin thinks that City are winning because Liverpool is not trying. Don't know if I agree with that. I still think that Liverpool want to break Man City's records from the great title winning seasons they've had recently when it comes to the amount of points. Uh, of course, the biggest win in margin. But, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting for me. Okay, Daniel, you have a beer, but I have wine. Cheers, mate. All the best. Predictions for the second half or. Uh, the final score. Let's get your final score predictions. I can see some of them coming in already. Lucas Van Marcus says 4-3 to Liverpool. Trust me. Lucas, if you're right, I'm not going to say I'm going to do anything because I could easily see it happening with Man City's defence and the way Liverpool attack. But, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, Brandon Reyes is which beer? A nice blueberry uh, lager. Going down very smoothly. Uh, we got 4 0, 5 0, 6 0, 4 1, 4 1, 5 0, 5 3 to Liverpool, 4 3 Man City, 3 1. Um, I've got a question here. What do I think about Sane going to leave Man City? Seems like the deal's obviously almost done with Bayern Munich. Uh, doesn't want to really. Uh, be there anymore it's been that way for a long time hasn't it and I think that Man City aren't hurting for attacking options so it makes sense he's kind of the long-term replacement for Ian Robin uh, and Frank Ribery very similar player yeah a bit of a shame because Sane was so good in those title winning seasons for City but the ACL injury right at the start of this season obviously hampered him a lot and I would love to see him stay in the Premier League. I really would. But uh, I think Bayern Munich are getting a great player. Man City are getting a great price. And it's, you know, the best for everyone. Uh, and someone else agrees with that in the comments. Sane's talent is too good to be on the bench. That's another thing. I don't know if he stayed at Man City, where would he start? Sterling, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, Aguero, Gabriel Jesus, uh, obviously Mares. There's so many attacking talents there. I don't think Sane was ever happy being a bench player or someone who would play 15, 20 games a season uh, or start 15, 20 games a season at least. So, be interesting. Uh, there's some predictions for 9 0, 5 2. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Five one, uh, a lot of Liverpool fans out there. Seven two. I mean, there's some crazy score predictions here. I hope you're right because this is going to be a very exciting second half for us all to watch. Um, but again, I'm Joe Prince Wright from NBC Sports. Thanks for joining me on this watch along. Really appreciate it. 
trying something a bit new uh, over the summer months this season. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed all your comments. Uh, a lot of banter going on between you, which is always good to see. I'm going to ask this question. Now that Man City are 3-0 up against Liverpool at half-time, what do they need to do to catch up to Liverpool next season? What's the one area they need to strengthen in? What do they need to do to become Premier League champions again next season? I'm leaving that out there. We'll look at the uh, comments in a minute. I'm sure you will have a lot of ideas on that. But at the moment, they're showing Liverpool uh, exactly how good they are. So it'd be very interesting to see uh, what they can do next season. And we'll leave the next question. I have a couple other questions, Man City, Liverpool related, but we'll chat through them in the second half. But uh, as I said earlier, it's been a great start to the restart of the Premier League. A lot of really good players. Uh, De Bruyne has been great. Christian Pulisic, Danny Ings, Aubameyang has been really good. Uh, Michael Keane, Raul Jimenez, Adama Traore, Martial, Rashford, Luke Shaw. Been a lot of good players since the restart, right? Uh, Alan St. Maximin, Miguel Moron at Newcastle. Really just love having the Premier League back. I, I, I hope we can do this again soon because it's been great to chat through all the action with you as it's happening on this watch along, but also just have a chat as if we were down the pub having a pint and talking about the beautiful game. We got Gaz in the comments saying Man United are the greatest football team in the world. I'm sure that will stir things up between both Man City and Liverpool fans mostly watching. Um, so let Gaz have it. Uh, got a question here from FC, or more of a statement from FC Carreta. Liverpool needs to make some signings if they want to win again next season. Yeah, I, I said maybe as a great comment we had earlier about maybe the, the holding player in midfield or a true number eight that can put their foot on the ball and dictate the tempo. That would be good to see, uh, to kind of give them a plan B. But Oxley chamberlain can do that. Kaita can do that. But can they stay fit? That's the main problem. Um, we saw it, obviously, against Atletico Madrid, getting knocked out of the Champions League, when a team sits back and Liverpool can't counter on them. When they have the ball, what can they do with it? How can they open up defences? Uh, Dare I say, getting Coutinho back would be a good idea, but I don't think that's going to happen, even though he's pretty much available. Barcelona have let him known. So, Liverpool fans, would you have Philippe Coutinho back? Intrigued to see what you think about that. Okay, Rowley says Liverpool need another midfielder and maybe another defender. Well, that's interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of chat about Koulibaly maybe coming in from Napoli. I like Matty um, and Gomez up until this game has been pretty good this season, but still has the occasional bad game in him, but he's quite young. Um, but yeah, that defensively hasn't been an issue for Liverpool, apart from against Watford and then today. So it's difficult to say they need wholesale changes in defence, but uh, maybe that is the one area. Going forward, we know they're stacked. Midfield, for the most part, good, but maybe that extra luxury... Number eight, box to box midfielder, classy, play, deep line playmaker, let's call him that. And then another centre back, certainly at full back and at goalkeeper. Don't need any help there. So be interesting. Okay, Seth says City need to bolster the defence. Hi, Seth. Seth Landis is comment there. City need to bolster the defence if they want to challenge, and Liverpool needs someone to play behind Firmino. So far, Kite hasn't done enough. Yeah, I think we all agree with City uh, on the defence there, Seth. Great point. Um, David Alaba, again, he'd be perfect to come in. Maybe it'd be a, a battle between Liverpool and City for Koulibaly. I think Koulibaly would be great for Man City. He obviously tried hard to get Van Dijk, but he went to Liverpool and they didn't seem like they were ever really willing to pay that amount of money. But after company retired, oh, not retired, sort of retired, went back to Belgium as a player manager. They haven't really filled that gap, have they, uh, with... Uh, Laporte being injured has been a massive weakness for them this season. So um, City need to strengthen defensively. And yeah, someone to play behind Firmino. That's interesting because attacking-wise, they usually Firmino drops in and Mane and Salah bomb on out wide along with Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. 
But yeah, I, I think that Liverpool, when I think back to the great Man United teams, not to bring Man United and Liverpool into the same sentence, but when you look at what Sir Alex Ferguson did, right, season after season, transformed the team slightly, changed some of the focus. Yes, they played very similar a lot of the time, but they also kept kind of reinventing themselves with different players, different assistant coaches, different philosophies. And that's going to be the challenge for Liverpool now. Um, that's why it's so rare to have a dynasty in any sport, let alone soccer um, or football, wherever you're watching in the world. We all know. We all know what I'm talking about. Um, it's because teams find ways to play against you. Like teams, as good as you can be, teams will force you to do what you don't want to do uh, and then you end up playing to your weaknesses. So that plan B for Jurgen Klopp, are we going to see that? The evolution of the are we going to see that? So teams are back out on the pitch for the second half. Klopp, somewhat smiling, doesn't look too happy, obviously, his team are 3-0 down. And in case you're just joining us for the second half, I'm Joe prince Wright. Hello, uh, great to have you along on this watch-along if we watch a game together. Have some snacks, have a beer, watch Man City against Liverpool. And in case you don't know the score, 3 0. 3 0 to Man City against Liverpool. I don't think anyone had that in the comments section before the game. I, I can't remember, anyways. It seems like a long time ago. But uh, yeah, oh, diving header action from Edison's 15 seconds into the second half. Long ball over the top, Mane racing through. We've seen that before, right? But Mane caught Edison and got a red card a few seasons ago. But Edison. Came out, diving header, went full Superman, headed it out, and uh, it's a Man City throwing after Robertson couldn't control it. A lot of questions here. Can I say hi to Malaysia? Hi, Malaysia. Daniel is coming back. He said he'll, he'll be back with some food and a milkshake. That sounds good to me. Let me know what food you're having, Daniel. Uh, could really go for like a burger or a hot dog right about now. So that's my next plan of action after I chat with you guys and then after I speak with Guardiola and Klopp on Zoom. Some Liverpool fans, I think, in the comments said this is embarrassing. Others say, I don't think Liverpool really care if they lose, which is, is fair enough. Uh, and other people saying, why are Man City trying so hard if they know we have already won the title? Again, it's that point. Going to hammer it home again. They want to put down a marker for next season. Right? This isn't about this 90 minutes of football. This is about if we win and win convincingly and win big, then that shows that the gap isn't as big and we are going to be there next season. So, uh, yeah, Man City got the ball at the start of the second half. And you can see behind the goals... Uh, Man City fan kind of montage as a mosaic of different Man City fans from all over the world uh, that are looking pretty happy on their videos, calls, watching from wherever they are. They'll be delighted, won't they? I'm sure you are all as well, Man City fans watching. Oh, Sterling and Alexander-Arnold having a bit of a disagreement, shall we say. I think it's all good now. And just want to point out a few subs at halftime, which is... I think, along the lines of exactly what we were talking about. Just the one sub. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is on for Joe Gomez at halftime. Looks like... I could be wrong. Looks like Fabinho has gone to centre-back. Or Liverpool could be kind of switching things up to a different formation. So, I have to wait and see. But it's going to be very interesting indeed to see how this second half plays out. And again, thanks to all of you from across the world for joining me. Joe Prince right for this special watch along. The idea is, you know, we all are in it right now, depending on where we are. So let's come together, watch a great game of football, Man City against Liverpool. The two best teams in the Premier League at the moment. One team is much better than the other because... Oh, it should be 4-0. It should be 4-0 to Man City. Alexander-Arnold, 
Gave the ball away. By the way, he's playing sort of on the left now. He's playing on the left flank and he gave the ball away over throw and Jesus was clean through after De Bruyne made a great run. But, oh, that's a bad throw in. And Jesus hit it straight. And I mean straight at Allison. It was like a back pass straight to him. Had the whole goal, goal to aim at. That should have been 4-0. we got a question here. Well, more of a comment from Josh Norris. I don't think this thrashing sets up well for Liverpool versus Villa on Sunday. Josh, keep the faith. Aston Villa, they've come out of a few big results this season. Um, yeah, Liverpool will be a bit of a wounded animal, won't they, uh, after this game? So, a bit like the Hulk, you will not like them when they're angry. But Villa, at the bottom, battling for their lives. Uh, and I really just think... With their oh, Sterling almost made it four 0 but I think it was Fabinho came in with a great last ditch block to deflect it wide. But every time Man City come forward now, they look like they're going to score. Liverpool fans, what do you think about this defending? Because it really isn't good enough. I'm going to cut you some slack because you've won the Premier League title with seven games to go. But any other game, you'd be talking and having an inquest about this defending. But Josh, to go back to Aston Villa in the relegation battle. Who does everybody think is going to go down? Send me your comments about the three teams who are going to go down. I'm going to go for Norwich, I think. Bless them. They're trying their hardest. The squad just isn't good enough. Good to watch, really, on a weekly basis. They give it a good go. But Norwich are going down. I think Bournemouth are pretty much done and dusted after that. Shocking defeat. Oh, Van Dijk just cleared off the line from Fodden. As I said, every single attack looks like City are going to score. So I'm going for Norwich. Bournemouth are done and dusted because they have a really tough schedule. And Josh, I hate to say it, I know you're a big Aston Villa fan. I think that Villa are going to go down as well considering the strength of their schedule. But it's going to be very close between them and Watford. I think West Ham with that win against Chelsea have some easier games coming up. So I think they're just about getting themselves out of trouble. But my three to go down will be Norwich, Bournemouth and Aston Villa. So good conversation starter there from Josh Norris in the comments. Gaz Elliott says Norwich, Bournemouth and West Ham. Oh, you think West Ham is still going to go down? Rowley says Villa, Norwich and Bournemouth. Great minds think alike, Rowley. Giovanni says Watford is going down with Norwich and Bournemouth. So that's the beauty of it, right? We've all said different teams there. Uh, and I think that going... Oh, hang on a minute. Liverpool got a chance. Oh, Mane, kind of a deflection straight at Edison. Yeah, it's so tight at the bottom. I think it will go down to goal difference and maybe the last minute or two of the season, which for Joss and Villa fans and everyone else out there, it's going to be tense, nervous. And speaking as someone who's a fan of a team that's had a lot of relegation battles over the years, it's not fun until you stay up and then it is fun. Uh, but up until that last minute, it isn't. Um, so, yeah, very interesting indeed to see a lot of you... Um, saying about that another question from josh what do you think the transfer window will look like jpw less activity than usual cheaper deals you know my big prediction for the transfer window this summer trick to see what you guys think a lot more swap deals a lot more loan deals teams may want to get rid of a player but they don't want to sell them with the current financial situation so they'll say you know what we can do a, a one-year loan swap Take Arsenal and Barcelona, for example. Aubameyang could leave. Barcelona, not really getting the best out of Griezmann. He maybe wants to leave uh, at, at the moment. So what about we swap Aubameyang for Antoine Griezmann? Everyone saves face. Everyone gets a star attacking player. Change of scenery. Um, so I think there'll be less deals money-wise, but I think we'll see a lot more loans and a lot more swap deals. So... Uh, yeah, interesting to see what you guys think about that. But I think now, as I said earlier, if you're a Man United, if you're a Chelsea, even Man City, and you've got cash in the bank, this summer might be the summer to spend it because a lot of uncertainty around there and teams may just take whatever they can get for some of their players, especially if they only have a year left on this contract. Uh, so just as free agents are like gold dust at the moment, oh, should be 3-1. Sadio Mane got played clean through. 
Uh, we had some comments about him tonight. His touch has just been a little bit off. Henderson played a lovely clipped ball through. Mane, one-on-one, -on -one, eight yards out, and he wanted to have a touch instead of a shot. Surely he just has to hit that. He goes to control the ball and completely missed it, and Edison calmly collected the ball. So, not like Sadio Mane, but he has had a bit of a dip in form in the second half of the season. Been really good, obviously, at the start of the season. A lot of goals, a lot, a lot of big moments. Oh, here comes or oh, Phil Fodden, the Stockport and the Esther. Again, driving forward, forcing the save from Allison. This is end-to-end. -end. This is great. I hope whoever had the, the four goals or more uh, question earlier, you really should have four goals or more. It should be six or seven, at least at this point. But I think transfer market is going to be really interesting to watch uh, this summer. Some banter going around in the questions here. Uh, loan to buy possibilities. Yeah, another good comment there from Josh about Jack Grealish and others. Uh, there'll be some movement between. Not there won't be movement between English players between English clubs, and I think you're right there. I think a lot of the Premier League teams will kind of just hold fire, see what the situation is, and maybe try not to. Oh, penalty situation! I think he's given it. Oh, outside the box. Outside the box. This blueberry beer is going down very well, by the way. Right on the edge of the box. Sadio Mane. Clip ball over the top. It's taken down. I didn't quite see who took him down. We're going to see a replay here. Mane. Oh, it's Carl Walker. A little nudge in the back. Mane went down. Was Walker the last man there? VAR's having a look. Contact was... Right on the edge, and I mean millimetres. We've had millimetres in this game before, right, with John Stones' clearance last season pretty much deciding the title. But VAR's had a look, free kick stands, no penalty is a decision and no foul by Carl Walker, at least in the box. But it was a foul right on the edge of the box, and now Liverpool have a free kick, very close range. Rowley says that my team Chelsea is going to be hungry next season. Rowley? What do you think about Christian Pulisic? Is he the new Eden Hazard? As I said, spoken to Frank Lampard a lot about him in recent weeks. Amazing, amazing few weeks and a great start to the restart for the Pennsylvania Messi. A few people have used that, but, you know, trademark that if you will. Uh, Jason Max, Swansea City is the best. Up the Swans, uh, struggling away in the championship, trying to get in the playoffs. Be cool to see them back in the Premier League. Um, obviously, Cardiff City, another Welsh team, battling hard to get back in the Premier League as well. So, we'll wait and see. The game will end 3-3. When will next season start? Austin Platt. No. Hang on, just watching Alexander-Arnold there. Oh, <laughs> probably would have gone in, but I think it was... Was it Van Dijk or Henderson on the edge of the wall? So Alexander had a free kick on the edge of the box, whipped it in low, looked like it was on target, but looked like it took a nick off Van Dyke, I think, who was kneeling down on the wall and headed it wide uh, past the relieved Edison. All right, Riyad Mahrez is coming on. Fantasy team owners anywhere, myself included, hoping for a big display from Mahrez. Not a bad sub to have, all right? Mahrez coming off the bench. Aguero, uh, obviously injured, but... It's the main attacking move Man City can make at the moment. Gabriel Jesus coming off. Mahrez coming on. And yeah, be interesting. Oh, Rowley loved Pulisic since he was at Dortmund, said he's phenomenal. And yeah, who, who are going to be the biggest challengers to Man City and Liverpool next season? Because Man City are doing great, obviously, today. But you'd expect them and Liverpool to be the big title challenges. But can Man United join the title conversation? Can Chelsea, dare I say, Wolverhampton Wanderers? They look a little bit better set than Arsenal and Tottenham right now to, to mount a title bid. So let me know who you think is going to be the biggest challenges to Liverpool's crown next season. Is it simply going to be a two-horse race again between City and Liverpool? Or are we going to have someone else coming in? Uh, let's wait and see. Got a question here. Thoughts on Angel, Angel Gomez leaving? Uh, 
I think it probably makes sense. I don't know if Gomez would have got much game time at Man United. Could go to Chelsea. Haven't seen if he has time with anyone yet. Um, obviously, on the, as a free agent, like we said, there'd be like gold dust, especially a player of his quality. Captain of the England the 17 team that won the World Cup a few years ago. So, great player. Um, I would love to see him at sort of a mid-table Premier League team where he's going to play week in, week out. Very similar to Phil Fodden in, in his ability on the ball, turn, pass, create. Oh, De Bruyne, lovely touch there. Majestic from the Belgian wizard. Took a high ball out of the air while he was backpedaling, chested it, juggled it a couple of times and laid it off. Is there anything this man cannot do? I don't think so. He's been brilliant. Oh, Daniel's back. He's having his milkshake and a pizza. Daniel, let us know which pizza you're having. Pizza sounds good as well, as well as a hamburger and a hot dog. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we got some high stakes in the comments here. FC Carter says, Eduardo, I will give you my car if Liverpool win. Wow. I mean, I don't want to get involved in this. It's up to what you guys do in the comments section. Uh, but yeah, be very interesting. Uh, and Austin, I don't think I answered your question earlier because of the Trent Alexander-Arnold free kick and that situation. But no date yet from the Premier League for the start of the 2020-2021 season. But I think the general expectation is that it will start in early September, be you know maybe a month back from where it usually is, uh, because of this season ending so late. It will end the Premier League season 25th of July, and then the Champions League and Europa League and FA Cup will take centre stage throughout August, and it will be straight back into it. So some teams will get a good five or six week period off. Others will not. Oh, Firmino with a chance for Liverpool. Blocked, Salah sets up Oxley chamberlain and it's blocked. And, and to be fair, to their credit, Man City have defended pretty well tonight and they started a counter with Mahrez. De Bruyne wants the ball on the left. He's going to get it. Now can he whip in a great delivery? Oh, he's found Mahrez on the edge to De Bruyne. who curls it wide. Good Man, man City counter-attack there. Liverpool once again ripped open on the counter. A lot of cool comments here. Okay, I'm going to get to some of the questions that I thought would be interesting to ask you guys. Now we're all here watching together. Who wins the Premier League title next season? I want to see your answers in the comments section. Straight up. Liverpool, Man City, someone else. I want to get a kind of a poll here. Who is going to win the title? I'm watching. I'm excited. I'm going to have a few chips and a beer. Man City. Man City. Eduardo says Chelsea. Chelsea. What a love for Chelsea. Liverpool. Spurs. Daniel, are you sure? Steve Logan says Liverpool. Austin Platt, Man City. City. Southampton, that would be an upset. I'd put money on that now because that would be a bigger upset than Leicester winning at 5,000 to 1. That's a good one, Rick. I will take that all day long. Um, Chelsea will win the title if they get a centre-back and a left-back. Agree with that. Attacking, they're great. The midfield, Kante's got them set up. They're good. Um, but yeah, if Chelsea get a centre-back, Ebremus is Man United. could see that. I could see them being in a title race, at least. Um, Jelani says if Chelsea get a proper centre-back and a left-back, um, Liverpool, Liverpool, Man United next season. Man United, if Burner says if they add Raul Jimenez, they'll win it. I don't know if they need any more attacking players, but I'd love to see Jimenez at Man United. But he's great at Wolves, so who knows? Liverpool, Liverpool. All right, so I'd say it's kind of 50-50 between Liverpool and Man City, and then everyone thinks that Chelsea and Manchester United will be the two biggest challengers, which I agree, I agree with. I think that's pretty spot on. Austin Platt, do I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be in charge of Man United next season? He's definitely for the start of the season. 
It depends how it goes. I think after the money they've spent on Maguire, Juan Bissaka, Bruno Fernandes, if they aren't at least in the title conversation by December, January next year, I think it'll be under a lot more pressure. I really do, Austin. Uh, it's He's had a good, you know, 18 months now to really bed in his ideas. We know how United are going to play. They have a clear philosophy. And they have a bit of a plan B now, I think, with Fernandez and Pogba. They don't just counter-attack. They can dominate possession. And, yeah, I think he'll be Man United manager. He gets a lot of stick, obviously, but it uh, be interesting. Divock Origi is now on for Liverpool. Just come on. Had a shot that's blocked. Liverpool are trying to work their way back into this game, but there's no doubt that this has not gone the way they would have expected at all. Chelsea and Man United will be good next season. Leicester City will win the title, Daniel. What's in that milkshake you're drinking? I want to know because uh, I don't think Leicester City are going to win it next season. I think they're going to struggle to hold on to top four, you know. Liverpool win the Premier League. Oh. Very interesting game going on here. Liverpool are trying to get back in the game, but Man City just aren't letting them do that. And here we go. Man City launch a counter. De Bruyne. Phil Fodden's racing free. De Bruyne finds Sterling. Cuts inside. 4-0 to Manchester City. Wow. You've all just seen that. Dear, oh dear. I, I don't quite know what to say. Liverpool fans. What are you thinking right now? It's 4-0 to Manchester City. 4-0. This will obviously be Liverpool's heaviest defeat of the season because they've only ever they've only had one other defeat in the Premier League so far against Watford. Sterling scoring twice now, winning a penalty kick. He's been an absolute constant menace. Not sure what Alexander Arnold's doing there with Mares. Mares has went well to win it back in De Bruyne. Shock, he gets another assist. And Oxley Chamberlain sliding in the line. Can't, cannot keep it out. So absolute demolition job by Man City, isn't it? I think it's gone wide as well. Oh, that could actually go down as an own goal for Oxlade Chamberlain. I think Sterling's shot was going wide. He slid in and put it into his own net. Oh, wow. Jurgen Klopp. Be very interesting. And yeah, I said there'd be four goals in the game, right? I didn't think that all four would go to Man City, but uh, for anybody hoping for four or more goals out there, I think you're about to get it because there's still 25 minutes to go. Okay, so here's a question now that Man City are 4-0 up against Liverpool. Something I've been thinking about since they won the title and pretty much all season, really. How many Manchester City players would get into Liverpool's team right now? How many of the Man City players would you take if you had the choice to take players from both teams? I've got my line up here. I might put it in the comments section. I don't know. Um... But I'm intrigued to see what Man City plays. Just name them. Three or four, whatever. Forget today, but generally, how many Man City players would you take and replace them in the Liverpool team with? I can think of maybe four or five, but looking at today, maybe it's more. I don't know. But it'd be really interesting to see uh, which players you would take. Almost five, Carter says. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, none, says Sajai. Mares and Mendy and Gundogan, really? Those are not the three that I would have said. Rowley says six. So, Rowley, which six uh, players would you take from Man City? Let's, let's see some lists there. Oh, uh, Isaiah, you are very optimistic, my friend. Liverpool win 5 4, that's his prediction. Um, Okay, Daniel has a question. We'll, we'll switch gears and get back to the other one. Who will win the FA Cup? Probably going to say Man City. I think they're going to defend their title. Looking at this right now, looks pretty ominous for anybody coming up against Man City. 
obviously they have Arsenal in the, the semis. And yeah, I think Man City are going to win the FA Cup, win the obviously won the League Cup. And I think they are going to push Bayern, Real Madrid, obviously Real Madrid, but Bayern Munich, Barca, PSG, all the way in the Champions League. Okay, we've got some names here. What's my name? Joe Prince Wright from NBC Sports. Thanks for joining me on the watch along. Oh, it's nearly 5 0. Sterling in again. Uh, okay, Rowley said that he'd take Bernardo Silva, Gabriel Jesus, Kevin De Bruyne, Raheem Sterling, Aguero, and Laporte. Wow, that's that's difficult to agree with. Uh, difficult to argue with. Sorry. Hmm. And Daniel Summero says he would take Carl Walker at Liverpool. Really? You think Carl Walker is better than Alexander Arnold? Fair enough. Uh, De Bruyne, Sterling, Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, so here's my my combined Liverpool Man City team. Okay, just think about this. So in goal, I think it's a flip of a coin between Allison and Edison. Really is. Either way, you're getting a great Brazilian goalkeeper, but I'm I'm gonna go for Allison, I think, in goal. Then across the back four. Again, not based on today's display, but I'm gonna go with Alexander Arnold at right back, Van Dyke at centre back. Laporte at centre back alongside him, and then Andrew Robertson at left back. I'm rethinking maybe my midfield selections, but I'm going to go for a 4 1 4 1. So the holding midfielder is Sabinho, who I think has been played out of the game today, but I'm going to go with that. This is good because we're at a water break now, so we're not missing this uh, anything. And the attacking midfield four, very attacking, by the way. I'm going to go with Salah, De Bruyne, Mane and Sterling in some kind of line. And then Aguero up top. So I've gone for one, two, three, four Man City players and seven Liverpool. But I think you can put pretty much split these teams down the middle. I think the only players that really you could say would be an either team is De Bruyne and obviously Van Dijk. And then the rest, it's kind of pick and choose great attacking and defensive players. But yeah, be interesting. You don't agree with Sterling. Eduardo doesn't agree with Sterling. You know, I put Mane and Salah in there. I have left out Bobby Firmino, which I know will not be popular because he's a Liverpool legend already. And I love him as well. Great smile, great player. But I think Sterling's shown today, Eduardo. I don't know if you want to admit it, but... Liverpool fans would be happy if he would have stayed there all those years ago. Obviously, he's chosen to go to Man City, had a great career there. Um, but yeah, that's my uh, that's my reason. Oh, KDB is the reason. Okay, that's fair enough. But I think that Sterling deserves uh, a lot more credit than he gets sometimes. And yes, he misses chances, but his productivity has been very good. Question coming in. What do I think about Fernandinho? Obviously, very good midfielder, decent centre-back this season. Um, obviously, oh, Jao Cancelo is coming off a of Carl Walker after the water break. So, Man City just kind of rolling out a few changes here, trying to stay fresh. They play against Southampton on Sunday as they try and, I guess, just keep winning and try and whittle down this Liverpool winning margin so they can at least have that record intact. Um yeah, Fernandinho, good player. Obviously, the red card against Chelsea was pretty funny. The handball on the line tried to cover it up as best as he could, but maybe he could have done that before VAR. I certainly didn't see it initially. It's only on the replays, the slow-mo replays, that you realise he had a handball. So I think it's fair to say he's a master of the dark arts, as people like to say when it comes to defending or you know getting a little shoulder, a little kick in there. Uh, he makes Man City tick defensively. And it will be really tough to uh, replace him. Lovely aerial shot of the Etihad there, seeing the Manchester night sky on a summer's evening in England. Divo Carigi turned in the box. He's gone down under pressure. No penalty given. I think VAR might have a look at that, though, the next time the ball goes out of play. Because that, to me, looked like there was contact. Oh, Riggi again turning. 
to Mane. Mane in the box. Good block by João Cancelo. Mane's offside. And the attack ends for Liverpool. This is thirsty work, I tell you. Oh, and on the replay for the penalty shout, it's very clear that Laporte got the ball there. Great tackle on the Riggy. Clear contact with the ball. Did come through the back of him a little bit, but he got the ball, so that's fair enough. Okay, Daniel, got to your question. I have a question. Do you think Spurs will stay with the coach they have right now? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? Before today's game, I thought Tottenham were heading in the right direction, right? And even during the game today, it was the VAR decision where they didn't score, where it really just unraveled Tottenham because they had so much of the ball. Didn't really threaten Sheffield United, who were pretty solid defensively and just do what they always do and were good on the counter. But I would be shocked if Mourinho is still in charge. Sorry, Liverpool just attack it again. I'd be shocked if he's in charge throughout next season. I really would, because I think that he has tried to already usher in his new mentality. Some players aren't getting it. Others are. There's been enough flashes of defensive work that it looked like it was coming together. But then it hasn't, you know, it really hasn't. It's um, For me, it looks like they've taken a, a lot of steps backwards since the start of the season. Um, we've got a sub here for Liverpool. I believe, yeah, it's Neko Williams coming on for Alexander-Arnold, who don't think Alexander-Arnold has the best game in a Liverpool shirt. Let's leave it at that. It'll be interesting to see how some of these young Liverpool players do in the final weeks of the season. But, uh, yeah. Liverpool fans, would you rather see a lot of young players given minutes in the, fi the final weeks of the season as Mohamed Salah turns and has a shot, but then Edison saves? Or would you rather see... Um, the regular team sort of play the rest of the season, risk injury, and considering there's such a quick turnaround, you know, um, it would be very, very interesting to see what you think should be the priority. Should the priority be getting minutes for these young lads so they can progress? Or should it be trying to win as many games as possible to get the records? Because I'm kind of of the opinion now, the title's done. Yes, it wouldn't be good to go into next season with losing a lot of games. But at the same time, do you really want to risk Salah, Mane, Van Dyke getting injured? I'm not so sure. Um, FC Coretta, Joe, what do you think went wrong with Liverpool today? I think defensively, there's been too many individual errors, which we haven't seen throughout this season. And is that small percentage when you're playing against a team of Man City's quality? You switch off for a split second, fail to track a runner, fail to pick out, you know, who you should be marking. It just hasn't quite been there for, for Liverpool when I've seen both the fullbacks. The, the energy, I think, generally, if I'm looking generally, the energy hasn't quite been there for Liverpool. And it looks like they won the title last week and had a few late nights. Uh, but can you really begrudge them that? Probably not. But, um, yeah, not as professional as I thought it would be from Liverpool. They had a few good chances early on. Let's not forget that. Hit the post and came out flying. But they definitely looked tired. And Man City looked hungry to prove a point, which is what I, I thought and we all thought would happen today. Um, so, yeah, good question. I don't think we'll see many worse Liverpool performances than this. Uh, and Jurgen Klopp, intrigued to see what he says after the game. And again, on NBCSports.com and Pro Soccer Talk, we'll have uh, analysis and reaction from Guardiola and Klopp um, after the game, jumping on a Zoom call with them to ask them some questions. So maybe send in the comments what questions you'd like me to try and ask Guardiola and Klopp after the game. What questions do you want answered? And then head on over to NBCSports.com and we will... See if we get answers for you. Diego Gutierrez. Uh, Joe, do you think that Pep will stay in the Premier League after next season? Very good question. I think it does depend on the, the European ban. If it's only for one season, 
I think he would stay and extend his stay beyond that. Um, but it does need a rebuild. As I mentioned earlier, David Silva's going. De Bruyne may leave in the next season or two, depending on the Champions League deal. Aguero's on his way out. Uh, Fernandinho is on his way out. You need to rebuild the fullback positions um, defensively. So is he up for the challenge? Will he have the money? I think he will to rebuild. Um, and is he happy just being in the Premier League and not the Champions League? I'm of the opinion that Pep has never really stayed anywhere this long before, so he's pretty happy at Man City. So I don't think he's going to return to Barcelona. He's kind of done everything he needs to do there. I, th I think he will stay. I think he'll stay for a, a few seasons at least, uh, Diego. So good question. Uh, I think right now we see that uh, he's still doing a great job at Man City, isn't he? Tim Chunks says, hi, Joe. Hi, Tim. Thanks for watching. Uh, Austin Platt said, would Liverpool break the wins, points, and or points gap record? The wins record, of course, when we look at that, I think they're on pretty much on track to do that. I, I just think they're on pace for 34 wins. The record's 32 by Man City. The record points tally is 19 points. Um, so obviously, that's been chipped away at a little bit by City today. And they're on track for 105 points. I, I think they may win, have the record for the most wins um, in Premier League history. Because obviously, at the moment, they're on 28 wins. Um, and they need to get five more wins. But it's going to be tight. Oh, and Mahrez just missed a chance. There goes a big week for my fantasy team. But I actually think they might just come up a little bit short on some of those records, considering what I've seen today. I thought previously they'd be a lot hungrier than this. And again, yes, they're playing Man City. Um, they do have some big games left, but generally they're playing against teams they should probably win. Diego Nunes, what about Phil Fodden? Uh, as I said earlier, as an Englishman, he excites me massively. Totally different than anybody we've seen in an England shirt. And as soon as David Silva leaves this summer, he's ready to come straight in. I should say Bernardo Silva's on the pitch as well now. So Man City have the luxury, don't they, of rolling out so many great players. Do I think Moncho says, uh, do I think Man City is going to win the Champions League? I don't know what the bookies' favourites are or who they are. I'd say, see what team from Bayern Munich. They're going to be right up there with Man City. De Bruyne, oh, just headed wide. Um, I would say that City will be the favourites alongside Bayern Munich. Barcelona haven't looked great. Juventus, if they get past Leon, uh, PSG, obviously, I'd say City are the favourites. Seeing, and you know why as well. I think that Bayern Munich have already wrapped up the German title, and that's been gone for a while. But they have a break now, right? They had the German Cup final, but there's a bit of a gap. They'll have nearly a month before they play uh, Champions League again. Obviously, they have to finish off Chelsea, which looks like they're probably going to do in the last 16 after having that three 0 win from the first leg um, but I think the fact that Man City will be playing right up until the Champions League starts with the Premier League then the FA Cup you know final potentially and then rolling straight into the Champions League I think with the rhythm of the play as we've seen a lot of teams have been a bit rusty after the restart so it gives Man City the edge for me okay Rowley question for Guardiola I'll try and sneak this in post game Ask Guardiola about what he plans on working on for next season, the defence or midfield, or maybe now that Sane's leaving, he wants another attacking option. Good question. Um, Jedediah says, who blames Liverpool after 30 years of a drought? Too much celebration to blame, too much wine, and are like, yeah, it certainly looks like they've been enjoying themselves a little bit too much over the last few weeks. So, um, again, who can blame them?
Okay, so we're seeing out the final few minutes here in Man City against Liverpool. Very comfortable for Man City. It's like a training game for them at the moment. Surprised that Mane and Salah are still out there. But they are. Gene, how you doing, mate? Um, this is JPW. What's your thoughts on Man United? Does Pogba have a future? I think Man United are going to be title contenders next season. Maybe they won't last the whole season, but the 15-game unbeaten run they're on right now is brilliant. Defensively, they look solid. Spoke to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after they went at Brighton earlier this week, and he said the togetherness, they look like a one unit attacking and one unit defending. And that's kind of been very disjointed at United for a long time. So now we're finally seeing a full team unit. Pogba and Fernandes, I love the way they linked up. You know, Pogba set up Fernandes for a shot. Didn't even look where he was. He hit the post. Then he did it again and Fernandes scored. And then with Greenwood, Martial, Rashford going forward. So much ability in the attacking line. And then I said earlier, the solid foundation that Man United have defensively now, just like Liverpool, it sets them up for wins. Uh, and I said to Solskjaer, you've had 11 shutouts now in 15 games uh, in this unbeaten run. And he raised his eyebrows, was pretty surprised by that and impressed and he enjoyed it. So, yeah, Gene, I think Man United are, are going to be in the top four next season. They're only three points off third place right now, uh, pushing Leicester and Chelsea really hard to finish in the top four this season. So I think there's going to be a big future ahead for the Red Devils. And uh, I was a bit of a skeptic for Solskjaer when he first came in, but fair play to him. Use the money wisely. Uh, and if they can keep Pogba there, I think now alongside Fernandes, there is a place in the team for him. And Pogba is one of those players that just wants to be wanted, wants to have a role in the team. And you have to play to his strengths. And I think with Matic or Fred or McTominay being a holding midfielder, if you can get Fernandes and Pogba in three roles attacking, I think you're onto a winner. I remember being at the Etihad Stadium a few years, well, quite a few years ago now, and Pogba was playing for Juventus. Great ball over the top. Uh, I think it was Higuain to finish. Uh, if you give him the time and space on the ball, he's going to hurt you. And he's a great player. So thanks for your questions. I appreciate it. Uh, Kevin said, how many subs can we use? Um, can we use more than three? Yeah, five subs throughout the rest of the season. Oh, nearly a goal for Liverpool. One of their subs, Minamino and Origi, or both of their subs, nearly got, kind of got in the way of each other, crossed to the near post. Uh, Robertson whipped it in, and it kind of just hit off Mendy, all of them there, and harmlessly went wide. So kind of the story of the game for Liverpool. Threatening position, but yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see this Liverpool the rest of the season, how this goes, because this could be a bit demoralising now. They lose a few games to end the season. Um, wonder what kind of impact that will have on Jurgen Klopp's side going into next season, because maybe in a good way, they won't have to linger on it for a while, will they? Because the new season is going to start pretty soon, so they can get rid of you know any rust and shake it off over the summer. But Oxlade Chamberlain just won a corner. Liverpool finishing the game strongly, but Man City are 4-0 up and don't really have anything to play for. A lot of people asking Kevin's question there about the five subs. Thanks to everyone in the comments. Diego, um, got a question. Joe, is it possible for Gabriel Jesus to reach the level of Aguero in the future? I don't know. I don't know if anyone can ever get to Aguero's level, to be perfectly honest. He's all-time leading goal scorer for Man City. <sighs> Obviously one of the greatest goal scorers in the history of the Premier League. It would be a big ask. I think he's got a, a little way to go with the timing of his runs. But I think that he can certainly be the main man after Aguero leaves. He's going to have a lot of chances on his plate game after game. But it will be interesting to see who else is there because after Jesus, who else is really there as a forward option for Man City? You have a lot of great attacking midfielders. And of course, that's the way that Pep likes to play with just one up front. But... Who's the next Aguero? Who's the next Gabriel Jesus, shall we say, once he steps into that role? Who are we looking for next? Because he can't do it all on his own. And it works really well for City to have Jesus there, to be young, step in for Aguero when he's not fit or when he's hungry. It'll be interesting to see what's going to go on here. Okay, a few people heading on out now with the game coming towards the end. Um Thanks for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch this game along with you. Love doing this. I hope we can do more of this um, throughout the summer, throughout the rest of the season. 
So I'm going to have a beer here and watch the last few minutes of the game. So if you've got any more questions, let me know. Uh, and Rowley, as you said in the comments, uh, we'll, we'll be speaking to Guardiola and Klopp in the next half hour. Um, so the Zoom call uh, will just be just for media outlets, but um, I will be uh, speaking to them and reaction and analysis will be on NBCSports.com. So it's NBCSports.com for the latest videos, highlights. You can see a lot more of my analysis videos on there and the great work that the production team does putting that all together. Uh, and yeah, a lot of fun. I have all angles covered at the Premier League. As I'm talking Liverpool and the attack, Liverpool fans, Man City fans, maybe get your final thoughts into the comments section. Maybe play a rate in who been your man of the match. I would say Kevin De Bruyne again, closely followed by Raheem Sterling. But let me know. I'm looking at the comments now. I want to see your man of the match. And final thoughts on Manchester City against Liverpool. Because as we head into the 90th minute, Man City are 4-0 up. Absolutely cruising. And a bit of a bad day at the office, right, for Liverpool. So, last question from Daniel. If Salah and Aguero were to face off, who would win? One-on-one. -on -one. If it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, I'd probably fancy Salah due to his trickery. If it's a pure like finishing exercise, then I would say Aguero. I think Salah still has a lot of chances. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Aguero for finishing, Salah for one-on-one -on -one ability. Okay, so man of the match. Who want man of the match? I don't see any comments here. Who do we think has been man of the match today? Interesting to see who you go for. Sterling, man of the match. Kevin De Bruyne. Alfredo says, oh, another question. Who will win, Henderson or Sterling? In the tackle, Henderson... Dribbling Sterling. Okay. Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne, man of the match. Phil Fodden. Good shout. Raheem Sterling. Sterling. De Bruyne. Yeah, it's been a good day for the Man City attackers, hasn't it? So um <clears throat> I think this you can put this down to Man City being really good. Liverpool being not so good. Um and yeah. Get your last questions in. I'm gonna be here through stoppage time, not long to go. So Enzo, if you want a question, I see you've asked for a final question there. So be absolutely delighted to answer your question on this watch along. A lot more love for Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin says that Mohamed Salah is passing more now. Pretty interesting. Good observation. There we go. I've seen definitely when he gets into the attacking areas. Maybe after what happened with Mane at the Burnley game, maybe a little bit. Would be interesting. Okay, so I think by the comments, I'm going to give Kevin De Bruyne my NBC Sports Man of the Match because he's been brilliant once again in my top five players since the restart. Um, and yeah, Mango says, I think Edison is a better goalkeeper than Allison. Wow. 50-50 there. Uh, and Enzo, we've got your question. Who do I think will win the Champions League, in my opinion? Based on this show, and I'm going to go with Man City, but I think Bayern Munich and Barca, if they go through, I still think they've got enough quality with the little man Messi to, to do that. So, yeah, this has been a lot of fun, guys. I appreciate all your questions. Head on over to NBCSports.com for the latest analysis in the Premier League. I hope to do this again soon. If you want to do this again soon with me, have a, a chat, some snacks and a beer. A great way to watch a game, I think. So let me know in the comments. Um, be fun to, to hang out with you wherever you are in the world. And let's finish by doing that. Maybe a shout out. Where are you in the world? USA, UK, elsewhere. Let me know where you're watching from. We'll give you a shout out and then we'll head on out for the day. Thanks to Rick for watching. Thanks to Ahmed. Got Houston, Texas in the house, New York, USA. 
California, USA. A lot of California. I hope all is going well out on the West Coast of the US for you guys. Massachusetts. Alfredo's in the US. We've got South Africa in the house. Puerto Rico, Andres. Thanks for joining us. Malaysia. Dallas, Texas. And this could be the perfect ending. Riyad Mahrez scores at the near post. Man City are 5-0 up with pretty much the last kick of the game. This is a demolition. We've got Jamaica. Javon's in the house. Daniel from Australia. Dallas, Texas. And as someone who owns Riyad Mahrez in his fantasy team in the Premier League, delighted to see him come on and score. Wonderful one-two. Squirms three in the box and beats Allison at his near post. Man, this is a rough day for Liverpool. I don't care what you say. They didn't try or the celebrations have been too tough. Talk about putting down a mark. Man, see, oh, we got a VAR check. For a handball on Phil Fodden, it looks like it may come back here. Handball. Oh, I got so excited there about Riyad Mahrez scoring on my fantasy team. It looks as though the goal... Yeah, it's gone back to 4-0. So, <sighs> game over. Full-time. Guardiola and Klopp have a nice hug at the end. A lot of fist bumps going round. Liverpool humbled. And yeah, what a win for Man City. 4-0. Thanks so much for everyone for joining me. Again, I've been Joe prince Wright. I am Joe Prince Wright. I will be Joe Prince Wright for NBC Sports. Uh, we'll try and do this again soon. Uh, and from myself, cheers for joining me, wherever you're watching in the world. Hope you've enjoyed this watch along for Man City Liverpool. Get your questions in. I've tried to answer as many as possible. Give you some analysis. And uh, this has been brilliant. So thanks to Ahmed, Diego, Daniel, Enzo, everyone else. Uh, I've loved this. Speak to you soon. Cheers.